Hello everyone, my name is Sneha Dhaya and I'm a graduate student at Columbia University majoring in business analytics. I'm also a student assistant at Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. So in this lecture, we'll be talking about deep learning and convolutional neural networks. This is basically an introductory lecture with a special focus on image processing and convolutional neural networks. It would be helpful if you have some basic knowledge of neural networks, but it is not required. The first section provides a high level overview of the most important concepts related to neural networks. This is included for review if the class is already familiar with the basic neural networks. Otherwise, it provides a very brief introduction to neural networks. So this is the basic outline that we'll be following throughout the lecture. First, an overview of neural network. Then we'll be focusing on MNIST data set that we'll be using to learn more about deep learning, convolutional neural networks, and computer vision. Then a few basics about deep learning. And finally, we'll be concluding our lecture with uh, some concepts about convolutional neural networks. So now let's dive back to the architecture of neural networks. As some of you might be familiar with this architecture, a uh, neural network is basically consists of three layers, that is input, the first layer, hidden, the middle layer, and finally the output layer, which are the layers at the end. So in this architecture, each unit, or you can say neuron, in a layer is connected to each neuron in the next layer. So if we want to compute the output of a specific neuron, we multiply each input to the neuron from the previous layer with its corresponding weight represented by the arrows and sum together. This is passed through the activation function that is uh, G of Z and uh, FZ to compute a neuron's output. For activation function, which is GZ, uh, for multinomial classification problem, we generally use sigmoid activation function. We'll be talking more about it in detail in the later part of the lecture. So uh, now let's focus on some few basics about deep learning and what exactly it is about. So neural networks basically forms the basis of deep learning, which is a subset of machine learning. Neural networks with three or more layers can be considered as a deep learning neural network. So uh, the concept of deep learning basically emerged in the late 2000s. It, uh, one interesting thing about deep learning neural networks is that they are trained on large amount of data sets. There might be some confusion about uh, in the literature about the number of layers that are considered to form a basic neural net a basic deep learning neural network. So in some literature, first la uh, layer is not counted. So if we follow that literature, then this neural network illustrated here will have three layers. Thus, it qualifies to be considered as a deep learning neural network. Some of the ap few applications of deep learning would be speech recognition, image, image recognition, natural language processing, virtual assistants, and self-driving cars. So now we'll talk more about the activation functions. Activation functions, which are a crucial component of deep learning, are a simple function that transforms inputs into outputs within a certain range. Activation functions should have several properties to be useful and to allow training. These properties are, they are monodonic in nature. That means they are either decreasing or increasing and they do not change the direction. They must be non-linear for training to be feasible. They are continuously differentiable and support efficient computation. A few examples about activation function could be ReLU, Softmax, Sigmoid, and many more. Talking about sigmoid activation function, for example, here given in this slide, it is an S-shaped curve used for binary classification such as logistic or hyperbolic tangent. 
Softmax, uh, softmax activation function returns the probabilities and is used for multi-class classification. ReLU, or you can say in other words, rectified linear unit activation function returns zero for any negative uh, input. So based on our model and our uh, machine learning problems, we apply activation functions accordingly. Talking about neural networks training, it is basically finding an, the appropriate, but not always optimal neural network weights. Neural network training enables the neural network to find the optimal or near optimal network weights given a specific data set. It is usually an iterative procedure based on gradient descent optimization, which although a closed form solutions exist for linear regression, but it is generally an iterative procedure. Some examples of training algorithms could be backpropagation, stochastic gradient descent with momentum, RMS prop, ADAM, and genetic algorithms. Again, like activated activation functions, we use these training algorithms based on our machine learning models. So now the second part of our lecture will be will consist of talking more about and understanding more in detail about our MNIST data set. So for the uh, image classification problems and understanding for understanding the basics of deep learning and convolutional neural networks, we'll be considering the MNIST dataset, which is a dataset of handwritten digits. It is also considered a hello world problem in the field of deep learning. So there are basically 60,000 training images and 10,000 test images in the datasets while each image has a dimension of 28 cross 28. All images are 28 cross 28 grayscale images associated with the label from 10 classes. Um, a variation of MNIST dataset in the fashion MNIST dataset contains images of boots, trousers, and baths. It gets more complicated and training times increases dramatically when we work with color images and images with more pixels. So now let's like uh, move to data exploration and try to understand uh, our data more in, uh, more in a better way. So first to understand, like to look at our data points, we'll need to import our data set first. So we will be importing the data set using the Keras library. This uh, function will import the 60,000 training images and 10,000 test images as mentioned previously. As shown in the console, the shape of the training images are 60,000, 28, 28, and 10,000, 28, 28, respectively. Each image is represented by a 2D NumPy array with the dimension of 28 cross 28. There are 60,000 and 10,000 entries in this 2D NumPy arrays for the training and testing data sets. The labels are also imported. Their data type is integer. This is used to compare with the results generated by neural networks. So an example image from the data set uh, is given here. So the code for that to plot that image will be using the matplotlib library. So first we'll need to import the matplot library and we'll be uh, using the im show function to plot that image. So uh, focusing on the data distribution to have a general idea of what our data looks like. Without looking at data, one may expect that the, these 10 digits occur with the same frequencies. But when we plot the bar chart, we find out that this is not the case. There are some discrepancies in the data. So very important is to visualize the, uh, to visually inspect the distribution of variables in your data sets using histograms and bar charts. This can be easily done using the Seaborn library. So uh, in the second part of the lecture, we'll be focusing on deep learning basics and we'll know more about the convolutional neural networks. Thank you for your patience listening.